get to the news. Tomorrow is election day, which means President Biden's impeachment trial, I guess, starts on Wednesday? <laughs> Former President Trump is reportedly planning to formally announce his presidential campaign on November 14th. No word yet on his choice for VP or First Lady. Former President Barack Obama and Donald Trump held separate rallies over the weekend in Pennsylvania. Obama campaigned for John Fetterman and Trump campaigned for 2024. <laughs> Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee Chair Sean Patrick Maloney said in an interview yesterday that Democrats will maintain control of Congress and added, quote, we're not perfect, but we are responsible adults who didn't attack the Capitol. Not exactly a high bar. Democrats are like the stepdad of political parties. They may be lame, but at least they're not the guy who walked out on you. <laughs> hey, I'm here! <laughs> Yesterday was the end of daylight savings time, in case you were wondering why these all feel more like 1.30 in the morning jokes. <laughs> the New York City Marathon was held yesterday, and Kenyan runner Evans Chibet was the men's champion with a time of two hours, eight minutes. <laughs> and 41 seconds. Two hours, eight minutes, and 41 seconds, the fastest anyone has ever gotten from Staten Island to Central Park. <laughs> At a rally in Pennsylvania over the weekend, former President Trump called Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, quote, Ron DeSanctimonious. <laughs> has anyone ever been worse at coming up with nicknames? Imagine Trump and Top Gun. People, people, I know we all love Maverick, but I think I got one that beats it. Are you ready? Everybody ready? Airplane guy. <laughs> That's right. Former President Trump referred to Florida Governor Ron DeSantis as Ron DeSanctimonious, which is a risky move for Trump because that's six syllables. <laughs> a J.C. Penney location in Pennsylvania temporarily closed last week after a deer wandered into the store. Even crazier, a couple weeks ago, a shopper wandered in. <laughs> He's asking what aisle stuff's in. <laughs> Over 50 students in El Paso, Texas, may have to retake the SAT after their answer sheets flew out of a UPS truck and were either lost or destroyed. The students are calling the incident disheartening, regrettable, disconcerting, or irksome. Astronomers predict that a total lunar eclipse will occur tomorrow, so if you look outside and the moon turns red, don't worry, it just means Dr. Oz won his Senate race. <laughs> That's what the prophecy foretold. <laughs> and finally, the makers of Miller Lite this week will offer a Christmas tree keg stand, and if you're wondering what Santa's bringing you, AA pamphlets. Yesterday, was election day, and late night is now projecting the Democrats will pick up at least one seat at Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> In an interview last night with NBC News, South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham said, quote, hats off to the Democrats for performing well in swing districts. Oh, yeah, hats way off. <laughs> Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock and Republican challenger Herschel Walker are set to head to a runoff on December 6th to decide Georgia's Senate race. And if you think Georgia's election process is confusing, imagine trying to explain it to Herschel Walker. <laughs> Pennsylvania Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman defeated Republican candidate Dr. Mehmet Oz yesterday. <laughs> In the state Senate race, Oz says he's just happy he doesn't have to pretend to root for the Philadelphia Steelers anymore. Democrat Maxwell Frost yesterday became the first member of Generation Z elected to Congress, while Chuck Grassley recorded another win for Generation Z. <laughs> <laughs> Texas Senator Ted Cruz was booed this week at the Houston Astros World Series Championship Parade, as well as the bank, the grocery store, his office, <laughs> and at his house. All in all, pretty average week for Ted Cruz. President Biden and former President Barack Obama posted a video on Twitter this week reminding people to vote. You know, it's nice to see they're still friends. The only way we're getting video of Trump and Pence together is if Maury springs it on them. <laughs> Maryland yesterday became the 20th state to legalize marijuana, which means that for the first time ever, there's something to do in Maryland.
<laughs> Former President Trump voted in yesterday's midterm elections in Florida, and then, because he can't help himself, took a bunch of ballots back to Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> and finally, a Brooklyn man who was on the run from fraud charges was arrested recently in Florida after the federal agent who signed his arrest warrant spotted him at a Disney theme park. Huh. It's a small world. <laughs> Always end with a dad joke. <laughs> President Biden spoke today at a DNC event to thank staffers and volunteers. Okay, but you know who you really need to be thanking, right? I mean, the way his endorsements perform, this man needs a fruit basket, which <laughs> would be a solid burn because he doesn't eat fruit. Following Democrats' surprisingly strong performance in the midterms, White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain tweeted yesterday, quote, never underestimate how much Team Biden is underestimated. And <laughs> wow, what a rallying cry. <laughs> That's like if Coach Taylor said, clear eyes, full hearts, everyone thinks we're gonna lose, but guess what? We're not gonna lose by as much as everyone thought, and we're gonna <laughs> call that a win. Go get them! Former President Trump's daughter, Tiffany, is reportedly worried that tropical storm Nicole will ruin her wedding this weekend at Mar-a-Lago. Though, if I were her, I'd be more worried about this tropical depression. <laughs> Just moping around, complaining about the midterms, jumping in front to catch the bouquet and yelling, this means I'm the nominee in 2024. <laughs> Allies of former President Trump are reportedly telling him to delay his planned 2024 campaign announcement, so now, he has to come up with a new explanation for what his big announcement was. Uh, we're launching Trump brand hard seltzer. <laughs> that was always the plan and not something we just threw together. Pennsylvania Republican Senate candidate Dr. Mehmet Oz conceded yesterday in a phone call to Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman. Fetterman knew it was him because it was a, not a Pennsylvania number. <laughs> Ex-Trump organization CFO Alan Weisselberg recently testified that former President Trump inflated the value of his Trump Tower apartment by $200 million, which he did by claiming it was a two-bedroom. <laughs> joke about New York City real estate, but... I'll explain during the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> a T-Rex dinosaur skull will go up for auction next month and is expected to sell for 20 million of Nick Cage's dollars. <laughs> a professional archer in Denmark recently broke a Guinness World Record by shooting seven arrows through a keyhole. Great for him, terrible for his nosy neighbor. <laughs> is that a two bedroom? <laughs> and finally, organizers of the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show have announced that next year's event will be moved from Madison Square Garden to Billie Jean King National Tennis Center in Queens. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> that was a monologue, everybody!